The lunar module was a fragile machine with an almost impossible mandate. It had to land two astronauts on another world, keep them alive, and then lift them off the moon again. But before any of that could happen, one system held absolute command over the mission's success. The Descent Propulsion System, the Lunar Module's Descent Engine. The only human-rated engine in Apollo capable of throttling from a gentle whisper to a furious roar smoothly and continuously in the vacuum of space. It was an engine that had to ignite once, work perfectly, adjust thrust on command, remain stable across an enormous power range, and guide a 33,000-pound spacecraft toward a landing site that humanity had never touched. It had no backup, no second chance, no way home if it failed. This is the engine that landed humanity on the moon. And behind its quiet flame is one of the most complex engineering stories in the entire Apollo program. The Lunar Module Descent Engine wasn't just special, it was unprecedented. Unlike the SPS engine on the service module, which fired at a fixed thrust level, the descent engine had to continuously throttle, and not by a little. It needed an adjustable range from roughly 1,050 pounds of thrust to over 10,000 pounds, a 10 to 1 ratio, something no engine had ever achieved in a crewed spacecraft. NASA needed a rocket motor that could reduce thrust smoothly during braking, hover on partial power, compensate for uneven lunar terrain, allow the astronauts to pick a safe landing spot, and react instantly to control inputs from computers or crew. And it had to do all this while using hypergolic propellants that were toxic, corrosive, and unforgiving. No other engine in the Apollo program had requirements this demanding. No other engine was trusted directly with the lives of the lunar crew during the most dangerous phase of the mission. This was the beating heart of the lunar landing. To understand why engineers designed the descent propulsion system the way they did, you have to look at the environment the lunar module operated in. The moon has no atmosphere, no aerodynamic braking, no wings, no parachutes. The lunar module had to slow down from orbital velocity entirely with its own engine managing every foot per second of deceleration with perfect precision. If the descent engine produced too much thrust, the LM could rise, stall, and crash. Too little, and the vehicle would fall like a stone. This balancing act required a motor that could fine-tune thrust from a gentle tap to a full-force burn. Engineers didn't just design the engine for power, they designed it for control. It was a moon lander's scalpel, fine, delicate, and essential. The DPS became the world's first large, deeply throttleable human-rated engine, tested for restart capability, but designed for a single ignition during the lunar descent. At the core of the descent propulsion system were two propellants chosen for absolute reliability, Aerozine 50 fuel, a 50-50 mix of hydrazine and UDMH, a nitrogen tetroxide oxidizer, N2O4. These were hypergolic, meaning they ignited the instant they touched. No spark plugs, no igniters, no pyrotechnics. 
This was vital. Once the lunar module reached lunar orbit, the last thing NASA wanted was an engine that needed a flawless ignition sequence. Hypergolic propellants offered the closest thing to a guaranteed start. Hypergols also worked across a wide temperature range and didn't require cryogenic storage. The LM spent days in space. It couldn't handle the logistics of supercooled fuels. But there was a price. The propellants were highly toxic and corrosive. Engineers called the oxidizer the Green Ghost. Technicians working around it wore full protective suits. Yet for Apollo, reliability mattered more than comfort. Hypergols guaranteed that if the crew needed to land or abort, this engine would fire. The descent propulsion system almost didn't exist. During its early development, the engine suffered from a terrifying condition, combustion instability, known informally as chugging. Inside the combustion chamber, pressure waves formed, oscillating thousands of times per second. These oscillations could damage the injector face, cause irregular burning, reduce thrust, or worst of all, destroy the chamber entirely. During early tests, engineers watched as pressure readings spiked violently. Some test engines nearly tore themselves apart. This wasn't a minor annoyance, it was a mission-killing flaw. To solve it, TRW engineers redesigned the injector plate, adding carefully shaped baffles and orifices to break up oscillation patterns. They tested hundreds of injector configurations. The breakthrough came with a design that distributed propellants evenly, suppressed wave formation, and stabilized the burn across all throttle levels. That injector plate, flat, perforated, and deceptively simple, became the quiet hero of the entire descent engine. Without that solution, Apollo never could have landed. Throttling was the key innovation. The descent propulsion system achieved continuous throttle through helium pressurization of its propellant tanks and a uniquely designed injector system that could maintain stable flow across a huge range of pressures. Throttling worked like this. Helium tanks pressurized the fuel and oxidizer tanks. Variable pressure regulators adjusted how much propellant flowed. The injector maintained a stable spray pattern no matter the flow rate. The combustion chamber expanded or contracted its thermal and pressure envelope accordingly. From about 10% thrust during hover to 100% during braking, the engine responded with smooth, continuous control. Modern engineers often compare the descent propulsion system to a grandparent of the Pintel injector found in SpaceX's Merlin engine. While not identical, the same principle of deep throttle ability traces its lineage back to the LM descent engine's core design philosophy. Apollo taught the world how to throttle rockets in space. The descent engine looks elegantly simple on the outside, but inside, its architecture is a symphony of precision. Key components included a hemispherical combustion chamber designed for even heat distribution, a large vacuum-optimized nozzle extension built from thin metal to reduce weight, a gimbal ring allowing the engine to pivot for steering up to six degrees, dual propellant lines, each with redundant valves, and a thermally shielded injector face protected from the brutal temperatures within. Because the lunar module needed every ounce of mass savings, 
Many engine components were as thin as possible, sometimes only fractions of an inch. It was lightweight, flexible, and strong enough for lunar landing, but nothing more. You could dent parts of the nozzle by pressing on them with your thumb. This was extreme engineering. The descent propulsion system wasn't just hardware. It was part of a tightly integrated control loop managed by the Apollo guidance computer. The AGC processed radar readings, inertial data, velocity, altitude, and descent profiles. Then it computed the ideal throttle level to follow the pre-planned landing trajectory. Three modes existed during descent. Auto, full computer control of throttle and attitude. ATT hold, computer maintains attitude, crew adjusts throttle. Manual, astronauts control everything. Apollo 11 famously switched into a semi-automatic regime. Neil Armstrong used manual thrust adjustments to avoid a boulder field, while the AGC handled stability. Every time Neil adjusted the throttle, the AGC recomputed expected landing points in real time. The descent engine responded instantly. If the DPS throttled too slowly or responded inconsistently, the lunar module would have crashed. This engine had to listen as well as it roared. The most famous use of the descent engine came during the final minute of Apollo 11's landing. Here's what the engine simultaneously handled. Low flow rates at the very edge of stable combustion, rapid throttle adjustments as Neil fought altitude and forward motion, a spacecraft overloaded with fuel and equipment, dust clouding visibility in the final seconds, continuous gimbal corrections. At one point, the lunar module was running on fuel so low that Mission Control believed Armstrong had less than 20 seconds before an automatic abort. This was the harshest test the descent engine ever faced, and it worked perfectly. While the world held its breath, the DPS did its job with quiet, relentless precision. The descent propulsion system wasn't just a one-mission wonder. Apollo 12. The lunar module Intrepid executed one of the cleanest landings in the program. Engineers later called this the textbook descent. The engine behaved flawlessly. Apollo 14. This mission nearly triggered an abort due to a faulty switch in the LM. If activated, the DPS would have fired at the wrong time. Mission Control improvised a software bypass. The engine itself remained dependable. Apollo 15, 16, and 17. Heavier J-Class missions placed even more demand on the DPS. Extra equipment, more science packages, longer stays. The engine delivered without fail. Apollo 13. Here, the descent engine became a lifeboat. The service module was crippled. The lunar module became the crew's shelter, and the DPS executed critical burns, including the famous PC plus two maneuver, steering the spacecraft onto a safe return trajectory. This was far outside its design envelope, yet it performed beautifully. Engineers later said the descent propulsion system saved three lives. The astronauts said the same. The descent engine had no backup, so engineers designed layers of redundancy, dual helium pressure regulators, 
redundant fuel and oxidizer valves, two command pathways, primary and backup, a design tolerant of partial failures, engine gimbling independent of throttle control. They even tested scenarios like partial injector blockage, pressure regulator drift, slosh-induced instability, and throttle step failures. The engine could survive virtually any minor malfunction. But in all of Apollo's flights, the descent propulsion system never suffered a mission-threatening failure. Not once. You would think modern lunar landers would copy the descent propulsion system. But none have. Why? Because the lunar module descent engine was built for one mission profile only. Vacuum only, human rated, hypergolic, deep throttle, large thrust range, fully integrated with a guidance computer from the 1960s, lightweight to an extreme. It was purpose-built for a spacecraft that would never re-enter Earth's atmosphere, never experience aerodynamic loads, and never need long-term reusability. Modern engines solve different problems, but the engineering lineage, the throttleability, the precision, the attitude control, lives on in many designs, especially in any engine that dares to throttle deeply in vacuum. The Lunar Module Descent Engine never received the fame of the Saturn V or the poetry of one small step. But without its quiet strength, Apollo could not have succeeded. It managed the first controlled landing on another celestial body, the first hovering maneuver in human spaceflight, emergency return burns during Apollo 13, guidance perfection during the most dangerous phase of the mission, stability across an unprecedented throttle range. It was a triumph of engineering focus, built not for glamour, but for survival. Its flame was invisible in the vacuum of space, yet it carried the hopes of millions. The engine whispered humanity onto the surface of the moon and lifted us toward new horizons.